What's going on guys? So I want to break down the NASDAQ 100 today because I have a feeling that a lot of people really got chopped up within that first 30 minutes, 20 minutes, even first hour, right? Just not being able to kind of get your feet under you. So one thing that I've been doing a little bit lately is not really taking so many trades right off the open, okay? So the reason why is because especially with the NASDAQ, it's so volatile. The candles are so big, right? The ranges are so humongous that it's a little bit difficult to kind of have a proper stop loss and manage that risk accordingly because you can take a big hit right off the open and then next thing you know, if you would have just waited an hour, two hours after the market, you would have caught that nice kind of free flowing move. So I wanna show you two setups that happened literally you know within the first few hours of the market being open now on the left side on this big side i've got the big chart and on the right side here i've got the five minute uh chart with the 20 sma i've got the uh 200 as well as my linear regressions so this is where i kind of manage my entries and kind of get in but i'm always looking at the one hour chart to kind of see where are we at on those one hour candles potentially where do we have room to kind of go so with the strategy that i use i kind of implement the two in conjunction that's especially what I try to teach in evolution traders uh, in the community, in the mentorship. I'm teaching you guys on YouTube how to identify these 20 SMA plays. However, it's it's you can use it. However, you, you, you're still going to miss things, right? Like because there's going to be some entries that maybe you missed. There's going to be some stop losses that you missed. There's going to be some take profit zones where you should be holding runners through that you're going to miss just due to the fact that you kind of don't know, you know, on the big chart where potentially things are going and this is especially what i'm trying to highlight you know on those daily live streams so what i'm looking at here if we look at the opening candle this candle that i'm kind of going over here if we look at this opening candle this opening candle shot up above this linear regression on a one hour time frame okay now again if we look at the five minute look at how it goes up comes right back down goes up comes right back down goes up comes right back down very very choppy so on the one hour yes it looks very clean that you could have got in you know somewhere around 820 and just sold all the way up here at you know you know 875 it looks that way but depending on your position sizing depending on how much risk you have on the table you know a lot of you guys probably wouldn't have been able to kind of sit through that move because it's just so big right the range is so big and i want to show you on something so even on the one hour candle, look how the we set the one hour high wick here at 838. And if you notice the 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time candle confirms that you should have gotten long. So I played futures a little bit today. I played maybe about five or six little scalps here and there. But what I was looking at on this first play is if we were to take out the opening range highs, I could see that we had room to kind of push here into this, you know, 860 area. Now that 860 area is going to be the 100 day simple moving average. So if you kind of think about that, right if we do have from around you know 840 into 860 that's 20 points right if i can't catch 10 15 points off that move then you know i shouldn't be in the markets altogether so if we notice though i want you guys to take note on something because i was in some pretty significant drawdown on this trade look at the high wick that we have here this 838 840 area if you notice this high wick at 640 and if i'm waiting for that first hour candle to get confirmed Notice how when we break this price action here at 710, right? So I'm waiting for this second candle to confirm the highs, and that's when I want to get in. Now that happens here. This candle does pull back. And I want to show you guys something. Even if you guys would have pinpointed entry at at you know 14,003 or 14,839, right? Let's say you would have pinpointed that entry, 838. You would have had to, okay, you would have had to sit through from 840, 838, all the way down to 786. There's not a lot of people that are going to be able to stomach that. There was one point in time where I felt that, you know, I probably wasn't going to be able to take any more trades. Now, again, I only took two micro contracts, so I wasn't in that heavy of a size. But if you kind of look at the 840, right, the 838 pool, from the entry here, let's just call it 840 for the sake of the video. From 840 all the way down to this close about 10 minutes later to 784 is almost a 55 point move. Now I want you to think about that. 
Off the open, these candlesticks are extremely rangy. They're extremely volatile. If you were playing one micro contract, you were in drawdown about $110, $115. If you had two contracts, you were in drawdown about $210, $225 at any point in time. So it was when we closed below this 20 SMA, I almost thought about getting out. Now, I want to justify something here because, again, if you're going to get in on this break over the opening range highs here, you have to kind of understand where you're at in the hourly chart. You're over the 5, you're over the 10, you're over the 50 SMA, you're over the 20. Even though we're over these levels, this is a significant drop if we were to come all the way down and kind of lose this range and then start closing below. That's going to be a huge, huge, huge drop. So we have to manage our risk on a smaller time frame like the 5 minute. Now, the entry candle was here at 710 and it dropped down at 715 below the 20 SMA. Now, it's below our entry candle. It's also below the 20 SMA, but I want to point out something very, very significant in why we have to trust technical analysis. If we close down here at around 785, and I'm looking at this 200 being down 774, and I'm already looking at my PL be down 200 plus point, 200 plus dollars at this point in time playing two micros. What's another 10 points? Another 30, 40 bucks? So right now I'm kind of squeezing water out of a rock. If I'm already going to lose 210, 220 dollars plus, what's losing 250, 260 to at least see if this play is going to work? Now, if this play would have broken below the 20, uh, 200 SMA as well as this linear regression here, it's this black line you can see. I would have been out and I would have taken a loss and I probably wouldn't even have come back to trade the NASDAQ futures at all. But if you notice, you sit through this area and again, I hate to I hate to bring this up, but it, this is trading and this is the way that it's going to go. Sometimes you're going to get these pullbacks that are 30, 40, 50 points and you need to make a hard decision. Are you going to stop out, meaning prematurely before technical damage is done, being that we do have this demand zone here? Or are you going to let it ride and then stop trading on the day if you do take that bigger loss? Okay, there's only two things that can happen. It's going to hold or you're going to take a little bit of a bigger loss and you're going to have to stop trading on the day because that's really going to mess up the psychology. And a lot of times I feel that that that's what kind of, you know, dehabilitates traders because they take these good setups, right? This is a great setup here. We had room to kind of push up and then it immediately pulls back down and, and we're in such significant drawdown where... You know, if we do take the loss and we start chasing trades later, that's ten. That tends to be where we start giving away a bunch of money, either whether it be the week's worth of gains, the months, the months worth of gains. It just sends you down a slippery slope. But you know, luckily this was able to turn around. It did hold this 200 as well as a linear regression, and it started to make its way back up here. So, you know, at this point on this particular trade, I'm already so mentally spent. I'm just looking to get either break even and or just get out of trade for a very, very small amount. So as we start to break the high of day here, which is breaking this previous one hour highs for the second time, I know that we have about 20 points to push up. Now, if you look at the area that I was looking to sell at, it would have been around the 860s mark. So that 860s was on this candle here. Literally, guys, you know, I would love to say that I sold right at when we touched touch this one hour supply zone, but I didn't. As soon as I started to go green here over the high of day, I seen this red candle start to spike up and go, you know, a little bit higher than the previous one. I just got out of it. You know, I just got out of it because mentally, mentally, that trade for me was so exhausting. However, let's look at what happens once we start to break down. So we put in these highs, right? Then we start to pull back towards this 20 SMA. This is a good area of demand. I'd like to see that, you know, if it would have held, I'd like to see it hold here, consolidate, and then break a new high of day. That could have potentially been a second little scalp trade through a high of day. That didn't happen. We closed below the 20 SMA and then we confirmed here. So I took this scalp. Now, if I'm going to take this 20 SMA play loss here, right? Where do I want to take profits? Okay, where do I want to take profits? If I'm only trading a couple of contracts, I'm going to want to take profits at the next area of demand. Okay, so if we break an area of demand, I want to sell into the next area of demand. So I sell on this run up. We hold the 200 SMA for a second, third, fourth time. We start to put in a little bit of a bounce. Now, this bounce here becomes a lower high. It tries to break over the 20 SMA, gets rejected, starts to come back down. Guys, looking on this chart, where would be my next entry? Okay, my next entry is going to be, look at this candle here, this 9 a.m. candle. 
So at this point in time, while you're looking at the five minute, look to your hourly. If we hit this area of supply, we never had any continuation to the high side, and then we start to pull back and we start to lose the five and we lose the 10. We'll look at the one, two, three wicks before where we kind of held this whole area here at the 20 SMA. If we lose this previous two hours lows, there's nothing but airspace down here into the 50 SMA. So below, below, you know, 780, 778, this is going to be my new entry for a short. Now, if you look at the five minute, what is that? So 780, 777 is below this 200. So if you notice this candle here at 915, look at the candle at 915 PST. We break below this here on the hourly chart is also losing an area of demand on the five minute chart. And it's also going to start testing the, the day's lows going back to the open. Look at where this candle closes at 771. I wait for it to close below the 200, right? Below the 200. And then I jump short this candle at 920. So this 920 candle has confirmed the loss of the 200 SMA as well as this price action from the open, which is our first hours lows, right? So if we look at that, those, you know, the previous hours lows here, this is where you're going to want to get short through these opening range lows. Okay. So as we start to flush, I understand that I've got room down to 631, but again, with the way that the market's been treating me, the way that it was choppy here, we didn't fa have no follow through. We came back down, we tried to hold and now we're losing it for the second time. I don't really want any part of this. I did take two trades later on in the day that I'll have to highlight in another video because this is already getting long winded. But I just want to show you how on this particular play, I could have seen how someone took a big loss here and then they start just kind of chasing and forcing trades if they didn't sit through that technical damage, you know, below the 200 the first time. Or they were just so panicked where they didn't actually take this short setup here or this new short setup here due to the big loss you know, that they took in the beginning of the day. So again, it all really comes down to patience. It comes down to managing your emotions. It comes down to trusting your edge, which is your technical analysis. If you don't trust your strategy, you will never make it in this business. And that's what I try so hard to focus on in my evolution traders mentorship uh, community is trying to get you to accept the fact that you will lose. Not every trade is going to work out, but you have to, you know, trust your edge. You have to play your edge enough to have full confidence in taking these setups when you do see them and kind of sometimes even giving it a little bit more stop loss sometimes even holding it a little bit you know less time just to take that quick gain so you can you know kind of breathe a little bit on some trades right i mean could i have held this you know another 10 points on that first long sure but i'm so mentally exhausted right i'm so mentally exhausted at this point in time i just want out of the trade i don't even want to mess with it anymore and sometimes that happens right i mean not everything is going to be perfect um, so you can see, you know, from the entry here, 750s, it, it drops all the way down to like 704. So, you know, again, you know, I didn't take that much points off of it, 16, 17 points, you know, out of 50 is it's, it's mediocre, right? So again, I just kind of wanted to highlight the NQ, uh, show you guys the 20 SMA plays that we're setting up here on, you know, uh, the five minute time frame. This is how I manage it in the day, right? So if you guys are wondering how, what I'm looking at personally, this is exactly what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my hourly candles. I want to see what how much room we have over the opening range or below the opening range. And then I'm kind of just waiting on the five minute chart for one of those levels to get confirmed. And when they get confirmed, I, I'm going back and forth between these two charts, between this chart and this chart and kind of understanding where are we at in the cycle, right? So if I still have room on the hourly, I have confidence to kind of hold it, right? And if we look at, at the at the hourly, here i mean at the five minute here to the downside well i want to know that you know below the 777 775 how much room do i have down and that, you know i got room to 730 and if you look at where this dropped it dropped all the way to 706 right so we came down and broke this 50 sma and came down to the bollinger band and then it's kind of spiked up the rest of the day but again, I just want to give you guys a little bit of, of knowledge, a little bit of insight on how I'm looking at it, how I'm processing it. Again, if you guys want to get access to the Evolution Traders community, the mentorship, the, the courses, we can do live one-on-one -on -one calls where we can go over trades in real time. I do the live trading over voice as well as screen share. You know, it's a great group of guys in there. Everyone's, you know, learning and or making money. You know, when we make the mistakes, we try to fix the mistakes as soon as possible. Again, we try to identify and help each other to the best of our abilities. Um, but if you want to join that, I do have a couple spots open for that mentorship community. You guys can definitely join in. That link is going to be down in the description box below. If not, 
I get it, right? Everyone's pockets are a little bit different, but I figure, you know, if we're trading, we have to have money to trade anyways, right? It's not like we're trading on our last dollar. So, you know, invest in yourself, invest in your education, get around people who are doing this. The last thing you want to do is sit there by yourself and kind of wonder, am I right on my analysis? You know, does this even look good? What does someone else think, right? Because sometimes we need that quick, swift kick in the ass. You know, even myself, sometimes the guys will call me out on particular plays um, that I shouldn't be in, you know, shouldn't be holding. And I have to try to justify why I'm still in the trade. You know, I'm expanding my risk a little bit, giving it the next area of support before I pull out of it. But, you know, as long as you understand what you're doing and you're not just sitting there like wondering, you know, where should I get out? Where should I take profits? It's okay, right? You might take a little bit bigger loss sometimes. You might take a little bit of a smaller win, but you know, you, you'll come around. I'll see everyone on the inside who decides to join the mentorship community. For everyone else, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.